Hello, everyone. This Welcome is to Smoke the Podcast, Episode 7. Um, as always, I'd like to thank everyone for your support and listening. Uh, means a lot to us. We really appreciate it. Check us out on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Um, okay, so let's uh, topics for today. Uh, our cigar. What is our cigar, Ryan? Macanudo Cafe Hyde Park. Our whiskey today is going to be Wild Turkey 101. Um, our firearms topic today is going to be hunting with uh, Sam. Yes, and sir. You'll find out who Sam is very shortly. Yep. Um, it's going to be a little short for a firearms topic, but our main topic is going to be uh, getting into cigars, um, just tips for beginners. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so let's let's go ahead and uh, get it started with the whiskey. What's in the glass today, Teddy? The gla- in the glass, Wild Turkey 101. Um, I'll give you a little description. Let me go ahead and pour that while you read. Perfect. Tasting notes provided by Eric at BreakingBourbon.com. I like the name of that. That is a cool name. <laughs> uh, on the nose, we have a strong blend of toffee and caramel with a hearty amount of alcohol scent uh, present. Spice and vanilla provide a nice base with additional layers of toasted oak and butterscotch. On the palate, it's saying sweet notes of vanilla, maple, and cinnamon are nicely contrasted with oakiness, spice, and char. And on the finish, the medium-length biting finish gives you a way to a slightly dry aftertaste. Spice, pepper, and oak dominate over the palate's sweeter notes. Wow. <coughs> That's a lot. That's good, though. <laughs> it's a mouthful. Yes. Um, <laughs> Let's go ahead and... It's poured. Cheers. What are you smelling? Uh, uh, it's it's he's not joking when he says a hearty amount of alcohol scent is present. <laughs> I'm getting a lot of that. Um, I'm not getting any of the toffee or caramel. I'm honestly getting spice and alcohol. Oh, uh, I guess I could kind of smell like a butterscotch. Now, I'm, as I'm reading it, I don't know if I would have noted that that's what it was. Uh, this is not on here, but I smell a little citrus for whatever reason. It could be part of the spice. Maybe. Hmm. Woo. Oh, wow. Yeah. That well. is <clears throat> different than any other <laughs> like glass we've had, in my opinion. Uh, for me, this is de- <laughs> I'm definitely going to enjoy this more once it uh, melts a little bit, the ice. <laughs> That's, That's pretty strong. It does say spice, pepper, and oak dominate. I'm reading the the thing on char. I'm pretty sure all I tasted was char, <laughs> spice, <laughs> and alcohol. <laughs> <laughs> that is definitely dominant. Yeah. Do you have any uh, unique facts? Uh, our our grandfather will only drink wild turkey 101 and not the normal wild turkey, which I believe is 86. And that refers to the proof, uh, meaning it's a it's a 101 proof. Um, which means it's 50.5% alcohol. Um, so the 86 would be 43? Yeah, which actually a standard bourbon is 40%. Standard wow, bourbon, so that, that even, yeah. Even the, uh, the, the, the normal standard wild is still is little... 3% more, yeah. So your standard bourbons are typically anywhere, I mean, 40 to 45, but generally, like your Jack Daniels, Jim Beam, all of them are at 40%. So, I mean, at 101, this is 50 and a half. It's certainly... You can certainly taste the alcohol in it. Um, however, I'm curious once the ice melts if it's going to be a lot smoother. It, in my opinion, it actually reminds me more of a scotch. Yeah, this is uh, definitely one to it. warm you up. Yeah, <laughs> on this nice, yeah. nice cool evening. Um, so uh, today we're going to do things a little different. Yeah, uh, we're going to do um, a little bit of a brief firearms topic. Uh, nothing. Uh, that's not going to be our main focus of the show. Uh, main focus of the show is going to be a little more cigar centric today. Yeah. Um, so let's get into the firearms topic. Uh, we're going to reca- recap our hunting trip with Sam, and Sam is um, Ryan's dad's hunting dog. Yeah. Uh, w- we've never hunted with a with a hunting dog before, a bird dog. Yeah. Um, so what what did you think? It was awesome. Um, yeah. So it's it's my dad's new German short haired pointer, and his name is Sam. Um, actually, I believe his full name is Samson. <laughs> um but yeah he, he goes by we all call him sam or uh <clears throat> sambo or you know whatever 
but uh yeah it was awesome really 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 fun um we went out to a like a, a local spot um that both theodore and and my father had been to um before I, I hadn't been there yet but it was it was pretty great we were going out there for quail um and actually we only had about two hours of hunting time because we ended up getting rained out but um to me uh, it was more important to kind of see how Sam worked and to see the difference in hunting with the dog versus hunting on our own. Cause I think it really, really changed the dynamic of the hunt. Um, that's just my opinion. Though. Oh yeah, definitely. And it was, it was fun just to see, uh, what it's like, you know, I, I didn't know what it was like, uh, to see the dog work is amazing yeah. just to see him just go out and kind of follow his nose and, um, kind of just kind of lead us to where, uh, it, where the birds uh he, he picks up the scent yeah and um he led us to a couple spots where uh there was definitely signs of birds but they weren't there at that time yeah well and then i he led me to that area where i flushed those the three quail um but because of the rain this wasn't it wasn't um it had been raining like a couple days prior as well so the birds were definitely scattered so the normal coveys of 10 20 or 30 were probably in smaller groups as they were out foraging and out, you know, kind of moving around. So yeah, and water is a lot more plentiful right now because of the rain. Right, and so they're they're definitely not staying so close together. The the covey that we did flush again, it was like maybe three or four birds, um, too far to get a shot on. But um, for his first time out and for being a puppy still, um, I thought Sam did great. You know, at least getting us to the general areas. So a puppy being how old approximately? About a year? So he's about a year old. Uh, I, I think he's definitely under a year and a half, but a lot of uh, people will say that the, the puppy stage lasts for the first two years. So a um, year and a half to two years. So, I mean, he's he's getting towards the, the end of the puppy phase, which is great. Um, so I think he's going to become much better uh, suited to hunting the more we take him out and then obviously the older he gets. So, so from what I know, Sam has very little training. Um, I, I believe he's... Uh, rattlesnake broken correct yeah snake aversion training. snake aversion training yeah um yeah but it just seems like natural <laughs> these, yeah. these gsps from what i hear uh, they they naturally know how to hunt and i definitely got that from this dog he yeah knew, he knew what he oh, was yeah. doing he was nose to the ground and uh 100 percent into this as soon as he got out of the car <laughs> well and so the day before i had gone with my dad to purchase a uh, a garmin collar a dog collar plus it comes with the gps tracker um the garmin alpha um i believe it's called and and um it's a uh, it's a pretty cool uh collar because you know it acts like a normal dog collar it, it, it beeps it, it shocks it vibrates um but then obviously it's got the gps portion so you can see how far the dog's going um how, how many miles it's gone um you can see where the dog is at all times so if the dog gets away from you in thick brush and then it notifies you when the dog is on point and all of that so granted um without much training on the collar uh, sam would indicate and point and it would notify us and then um whenever uh my dad felt that you know sam needed to stop slow down turn back the other way he would just beep him he never once had to vibrate or shock sam he he was very responsive just to the tones uh, of the beeping on the collar which was really really cool it was it was neat to see him out there running full bore and immediately stop and look back and go oh shoot okay i gotta i gotta beep on the collar i'm you yeah know, I one, of the, head back. one of the times that uh he was toned or beeped uh i was standing right next to him and uh the you know uh, my uncle frank was over the hill so he couldn't see him didn't didn't know that i was right there and, and as soon as he he beeped him he, it, the dog immediately stopped and went and was looking around and all i had to do was just point i said oh he's over the hill and, and the, the dog <laughs> went to the top of the hill and then went and found him it was yeah. amazing yeah <laughs> yeah and it was really cool even as as he'd go through i mean he was sweeping back and forth just kind of you know we were moving in a straight line and then he was in front of us just zigzagging um and it was cool every time he'd come back around he'd he'd run up and and you know put his head up against me as he'd run by and just like just kind of to let me know hey i'm here and but i'm i'm working and i'm doing my thing which was really cool and then again was very responsive to to i think all three of us even even when i would call him he'd come to me and so yeah it was it was pretty cool yeah we, i look forward to uh taking a little out more, more hunting yeah um, we'll definitely have to get my dad on there and um and on on the podcast here and, and have him talk a little bit more about it yeah but it, it, unfortunately we did get rained out uh, we knew it was going to rain and we kind of just wanted to take the dog out just to see see how he uh, we weren't really expecting much uh as far as you know uh catching or you know shooting anything but 
uh, at, at least we're out there for and you know a good hour or two. No, I think it was about two hours. Yeah, about because two I hours. I think from eight eight to ten or ten thirty ish. Um, we had to get out of there though, mainly because of the flash flood warnings. So, um, but yeah, it was a lot of fun, and I I can't wait to go out again. So, all right, well let's move on. Um, move on to the cigar. The cigars have been lit um, since we started this. I'm about midway through the first third. Uh, what do you think? So. Th- Today's cigar again. It's a, a Macanudo Cafe Hyde Park. Um, so let me let me read you the description, um, and then we can kind of go in, into our initial thoughts. So um, the description that I got was actually off of Cigar International, which is actually where I ordered uh, this cigar from. Uh, they're a great website. Highly recommend them. Um, and they state that the Macanudo is uh, well constructed using Dominican and Mexican filler and Connecticut shade wrappers, Macanudo handmaids have built up a fine reputation for quality, which is part of what makes them so damn popular. These are the top selling cigars in the world, and it's hard to argue with a statistic like that. Macanudo Cafe has earned a well-deserved 90-point rating, noting full of bright and zesty tobacco. This Lionsdale offers plenty of earthiness and nutty notes as well and uh i could not agree more with cigar international's uh review of them these are mm-hmm. these are very very popular cigars and again they're right it is hard to argue with the statistic of being the top selling cigar worldwide um so this is i guess probably the most popular cigar we've smoked um just because it's the most popular in the world <laughs> uh so some unique facts about macanudo and specifically the macanudo cafe hyde park um, most Macanudo sizes are actually British themed names. So you typically hear Robusto, Churchill, Torpedo, Corona. Um, they have British themed names like Hyde Park and the Prince of Wales. And, uh, um, there's a few other ones that are actually pretty cool. Um, Hyde Park is actually a, a large park in London and I have actually been there, which is oh, awesome. pretty cool. Um, so the Hyde Park actually is a Robusto. So it's just their name for the Robusto. So anytime you hear of a Macanudo, um, it doesn't matter the series or the collection. Um, if you hear Hyde Park, you know it's one of their Robusto okay. size. Um, it means it's a five and a half inch long with a 49 ring gauge size, um, which is pretty, pretty cool. Um, and then on top of that, uh, the Mac Cafe Hyde Park is in my top five go-to smokes, and they are also very great for beginners. So this is this is definitely my top five list. Um, so also on Cigar International right now, um, just today I looked it up, it's $156 for a box of 25 cigars on Cigar International. So that goes for about $6 uh six and some change for uh, one per cigar which is actually a really good price because in most shops you're going to find them for about twelve dollars okay yeah well, that's, um, a, that's a pretty good deal so yeah <laughs> these are actually really really good cigars they are, they go on sale a lot too because they're so popular uh-huh. that that's honestly like their the msrp is like 250 for the box i think um, yeah so you're saving a lot at 156 but they go on sale even more than that i've seen boxes of 25 as low as like 89 dollars, which is a, a really really good deal that brings it closer to like three dollars a cigar that's definitely a good deal so any initial thoughts on on the cigar now that you've had like i said i've had tons of these but um yeah i mean it does say earthiness and i I get the the uh the earthiness from it yeah um i love the aroma of this cigar i mean as soon as i lit it uh you actually you made a comment too about how how great it smells it just it's it's very good smelling cigar it's one of those cigars like i said i would give up smoking this cigar if i could just smell someone smoke this cigar <laughs> the um <laughs> the ash is really really nice white um pretty good line and it's staying pretty consistent with the actual ring gauge too i mean it's yeah. not expanding too much um you know I, I barely took a little bit off on the cut and it's got a very 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 good draw for me Woo. what i like and i just lost the first part of my ash at about an inch in which is is decent yeah that's good yeah <laughs> so um yeah no i definitely like them you can taste the earthiness um it'll get more zesty as as we move forward into the body um once we hit like the second third it's, okay. it's going to get a little more zesty the nice thing though is is these are connecticut wraps so they're on the mild side but it gives you kind of that medium flavor mm-hmm. like uh, the uh, flavor that would be more consistent with like a medium bodied cigar which is why i like them they're not you know i feel like a lot of the cigars we've had on on this show so far have been really smooth really creamy mm-hmm. like really easy to smoke 
these are easy to smoke um because they're mild cigars but yet they have the flavor of like a medium bodied cigar yeah we really nice. don't get the spice and the the earthiness uh with a lot of the cigars we've smoked so yeah far. so it's kind of a nice little change up without having to go like full body you know <laughs> yeah <laughs> like yeah, strong I, strong cigars i completely agree um so uh being that this is a good beginning cigar that kind of leads us into our topic yeah yeah so it, you know this this topic today i titled it getting into cigars with a question mark you know so for those of you that are, are getting into cigars um there's a lot of different things to know when you're getting into cigars it's not i mean it can be as simple as buying a cigar and cutting it and lighting it and yeah. you're done but um oftentimes you have to have some essentials even to get that far uh-huh. so um, number one, the most essential thing when getting into cigars is the cigars themselves. Obviously. Uh, so <laughs> one of the things that, that we recommend for people who are just, just getting into cigars is to start out with a mild, light Connecticut wrapped cigar. Um, if, even if at that, if you're still unsure, flavored cigars are okay. There's, n- there's no shame in starting out with a good flavored cigar. Oh yeah, um, definitely. I it, still smoke flavored cigars, but not that I'm a seasoned uh, cigar smoker, but you right. know, I, no, no, yeah. I, it, I enjoy it. You know what it is too? It's, it's a different experience as well. And so to me, I, I do like flavored cigars from time to time, but I recommend them to beginners because the, the tobacco is usually even lighter than like a Connecticut wrap cigar. Uh-huh. Um, and, and if you're not quite used to that, the smoke or the tobacco flavor, it's kind of nice to have a, a hint of vanilla or cherry or grape or whatever it mm-hmm. might be on the back of that. So um, we recommend that. The other thing is uh, small and short in size, which would mean like Coronas, Robustos, or even Cigarillos, the smaller ones. Yeah, I think one thing that um, someone that's not a, that, that doesn't smoke a lot of cigars uh, might not realize is uh, some of these cigars that, that are out there can take an uh, hour to two hours of smoke. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, so if you get, get yourself into a big cigar, uh, you could be in for a while, you know, oh, yeah. if, if you're not expecting it. Well, and if you're a slow smoker, too, I mean, they, they, they Churchill's, I want to say, average about three hours, you know, depending oh, yeah. on how slow you're smoking. Um, for me, I tend to smoke a little faster, but... Um, even when I first started out, I didn't smoke as fast as I do now. And it, it's, it, yeah, it's definitely one of those things where even a Corona can last you 30 to 45 minutes. Mm-hmm. So, um, making sure you have that, that time. Yeah. It's not one of those things where you can just, uh, casually, yeah, kill, kill 15 <laughs> minutes with it, Yeah, you know, and, and, you know, if you come from other things like maybe, you know, smoking cigarettes, something where uh, you can take a cigarette break, you, you don't take, <laughs> you don't take a cigar break. Uh, this, well, a cigar is, is a, uh, it's an event. Yeah, even <laughs> even cigarillos tend to tend to take longer than oh, yeah. than maybe like a cigarette might or something like that. I, I don't really have any experience with that, but um, but yeah, I know they tend to take about fifteen to twenty minutes um, to smoke a cigarillo. So um, let's go over some starter brands. Uh, do you want to go through a couple of those, Teddy? Uh, sure. Yeah. You know, good starter brands. Um, Macanudo. Yep. What we're what we're having right now. <laughs> You know, I like some some Rocky Patels, uh, Nub, which are uh, real short. Uh, they have thicker ring gauge, but uh, pretty short cigars. Yeah. Um, th- those are those are really good. Um, but with all these brands, you got to make sure you're still looking for uh, the uh, the more mild series. Yeah, more mild series because all of these you can you can get uh, <laughs> some really more strong body cigars. Ones. Yeah. Well, Rocky Patel makes some very, very strong cigars. Yes. Um, So making sure that that's why, you know, we started out with making sure you have the mild, light, or Connecticut wrapped um, series of cigars when you're looking at these. And then again, on the smaller sizes of that. Um, And we'll get into some of the tips on on how to like pick cigars. But um, one of the best things you can do is just ask, you know, when you're when you're looking for it, say, hey, these are some of the the names I've heard and have been recommended, but yeah. Yeah, and these ones are on the little more uh, expensive side if you, you know any uh, cheap ones? Cheaper cheaper smokes, you know? Yeah, You don't want to yeah. drop that much money? Yeah, so the, the, the better ones, the, the ones that are a little cheaper, in my opinion, are, and, and are good, I should say, because there's a lot of cheap cigars that are not very good. <laughs> um, the ones that I don't mind smoking that are that are really, really cheap are J, JM cigars, or J&M cigars. Um, uh-huh. Uh, they have a bright yellow and black label yeah. or if you're if you're getting into like a darker color the uh, um, the maduro wrapped cigars have a black label with yellow coloring okay. so it's it's black and yellow are the two two colors of their brand um but they're really good the coronas run about two to three dollars um in california they may be a little more 
because now with the, the tobacco are. tax, but um, most places they run anywhere between two, two to three dollars. I think in Arizona they may be a little cheaper. Some of the other the states where tobacco is cheaper, they might be as cheap as like one to two dollars. Um, when I first started smoking cigars when I was eighteen, they were about a, a buck and a half, which was great when you're eighteen and don't have a lot of money. It's like a really easy way to get into smoking cigars. Um, the other great one is Bahia's. Um, Bahia has a really great Bahia, Connecticut. We've already smoked it on the show before, and we had the review on that one. Um, highly recommend those. You can get like a box of 50 of them for $40 on Cigar International. Um, I think they sell them in smaller quantities, but um, really, really good and really reasonable um, pricing. The other great way to get cheap cigars is to buy a sampler pack. Now, you can do this online. In fact, um, I just the, – these Macanudo Hyde Parks came out of a Connecticut sampler pack, which uh-huh. is really cool. Um, it was like $30 for 10 cigars, which is a really, really great price. I mean you're looking at essentially $3 a cigar. And we just figured out that these are go for about 6 to $7 a cigar or – 10 to yeah, 12 or, in yeah, store. 10 to 12 yeah. In store, yeah. So that's a really great way to get, get a lot of cigars for cheap. Um, a lot of cigar shops will also sell like a grab bag where it's just a mix of like four or five cigars mm-hmm. for 20 bucks or whatever it might be. Um, but yeah, ordering online is the cheapest way to get cigars. So sampler packs are a really good way. And then as far as flavored cigars, do you have any suggestions on that? Oh, well, my one of my favorite cigars is acid cigars. Right. <laughs> acid cigars are kind of what got me started in smoking cigars. Yeah, um, they're really good. They have a unique flavor that I've heard described as Christmas. Yes, yeah. <laughs> it's a, kind of like a fruity, spicy, sugary uh, coating, and it just uh, seems to be unique to acid cigars. Well, and they're dipped too. That's yeah. the other thing. The, the tips of the cigars are dipped in like either a honey or sugar, depending on the the uh, series of the cigar that you go with. Um, the, uh, so acids are manufactured by a, a bigger cigar company called Drew Estate. It's one of their, one of their series. And then within the acid series or collections, I should say within the acid collection, they have a bunch of different series. Yeah. Um, they also are responsible for a collection called the Java, um, series or Java collection where, um, they have different ones that taste like coffee, chocolate, yeah. um, vanilla, like, you know, different types of coffees. Um, and those are really good. I've had those. those yeah, are... I've had one of those. That was a little stronger. Yes, they're and, definitely you know, stronger. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a lightweight when it comes to cigars for the most part. So. <laughs> but they make some really, really thin ones that you can have with a cup of coffee and be done in like 25 uh-huh. minutes or 30 minutes versus like some of these bigger size cigars, um, which is great. The other thing to, to note about acid um, cigars is a lot of them look dark, but they're actually really mild cigars. Okay. So, yeah, um, which is cool. And then last but not least for the flavored, the one of the best ones are Tatiana's. They're about 4 or $5 a cigar, maybe a little more now. Um, but those are great. They come in a lot of different flavors everywhere from, again, chocolate, vanilla. They've got a lot of tropical flavors, so like uh, – like mango and, and grape and, and peach and, and basically just a whole spectrum of, of fruit flavors. So those are really, really good if, if you're just getting into cigars. You want some tobacco, but you also need kind of the flavor or want the flavor to, to kind of smooth it out and even things out a little bit. Cool. So, um, you know, once you decide on a cigar, um, you bring it home, you got to cut it. <laughs> so yep. uh, let's talk about cutters. Um, a lot of times if you go to a cigar shop, um, they, they'll they'll cut them for you if you want. Yeah. You know, and they'll always ask you, you know, you're going to smoke this right away. And if you're going to go home and smoke it, you know, they, they'll they'll cut them for you. Yeah. Um, especially if you're new to cigars and then they'll kind of show you how to cut it. Yeah. I, um, I highly recommend having a cigar shop uh, associate cut your cigar for you yeah and if you're just getting into it um you go to the you go to the shop and you just you you smoke it there you know or you yeah. can smoke it in as a soon as you get home or, yeah as soon as you get home um, or... because you know you probably haven't bought the uh, the human door yet or or uh you don't have all the accessories yet so yeah absolutely so, so what, what kind of cutters do you like so for me actually and i think you're probably similar to me on this one um i like guillotine or straight cutters uh-huh. um basically what it is they call it the guillotine so guillotine technically the true guillotine cutters have a blade only on one side and just come sliding down and essentially cut the end of the cigar off um it's also been given the name though for the double bladed so i use a double bladed um zygar or zycar however you want to pronounce it um that that's what i have and the great thing about mine is it's it's extremely sharp and then after you cut it locks in place so the blade is no longer exposed after you make the cut on your cigar which is cool 
Um, and it's got a little ring essentially that you can put the end of the cigar through and then you squeeze the two ends together and the two blades come together and just snip the end of the cigar off. And I love them. Um, they're great. Uh, the biggest thing, like I said, uh, is make sure it's sharp. And those are the most common, uh, cutters you're going to see and pretty much will cut any style of cigar, which is why they're, why they're the most common. Yeah. I, I use one just like that. Yeah. Not, not actually not the same type, but, um, I use a guillotine also. Style, yeah. 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 Um, so what about uh, the punch cutters? So punch cutters were actually a lot more common back in the day. I know my, my grandfather, our grandfather, talks about punch cutters um, or has talked to me about them a, a, on a few occasions. Um, to be honest, they're, they're not as popular, or at least I just don't see them. It, like a lot of my friends and people that I know that smoke cigars don't typically use them. Um, they're great though because they're small and they can fit on a keychain, um, and you can kind of carry them everywhere with you. The downside with punch cutters is they do not work well on any pointed tip like torpedoes, um, and they're really bad with small ring gauges because usually the punch is a designated oh, size. Yeah, that's true. So if you punch into a small ring gauge, it might punch the entire. Yeah, you're not gonna yeah. you're not gonna be able to get a cigarillo with. Yeah, with that one. absolutely. In fact, a cigarillo might be able to fit inside the punch, <laughs> so it wouldn't you know it wouldn't do anything. So yeah, punch cutters are are not super super common, but um, they do have them. You know, it'd be cool to have one on your keychain though, because sometimes you don't think you're gonna smoke a cigar and you end up coming across one, and nobody has a cutter yeah or you know it well see it's cool it's cool just to have one i'm I'm the guy that has a cutter in my truck and my golf bag and my (laughs) gun bag and you know basically i I have a cutter everywhere but but yeah no punch cutters are great for someone who uh who wants just a a nice easy everyday carry kind of cutter um i do have one in my collection i just i don't tend to use it too often okay uh, what about V cutters? So V cutters are super cool. Um, they only work on flat top cigars. Again, you can't use them on any kind of odd shaped top. So what it is essentially is it takes a V right out of the top of the cigar. So it leaves you with like a little dent in the in the top. Mm-hmm. Um, they say that it's really good for draw because it it literally just cuts out a, a perfect v you you push the the tip of the cigar right into the cutter and then just slide it through it works just like a guillotine cutter but the blade instead of being flat is essentially shaped like a v okay um so the it cuts down, a little v out of your yeah cigar. the downside is if you miss angle the cigar like if you get a good v cutter you can't do it but on like the cheap ones if you miss angle it you can you could cut like a deep v like across the edge uh, of okay, it yeah. or like you can really mar up a cigar if you don't know how to do it <laughs> Yeah, I've um, I've I'm, never used one, um, and I, I've never really seen the point. I, I feel like like you would mess the cap up. Yeah, well, you can, and that that's the problem with them is if you don't know how to use them properly, yeah, you can totally butcher the cap. Um, so yeah, they're they're cool. I have one as well, and and I like them um, for certain cigars. And and like I said, it gives you more consistent draw. The only downside is if the cigar isn't that good of quality. Um, it, it really cuts a lot deeper than like a guillotine cutter. So if the, if the draw is loose, you're going to be bringing in a lot more smoke. So you might have a tendency to actually get like a head change if you don't know how to cut right with the, with a V cutter. Yeah. Well. I wasn't sure, but it, it, um, in my, in my mind, I thought it would give you a looser draw. It, it, it can, or, but again, if it's wrapped tight, it can actually be a really nice draw. So I just, to me, guillotine cutter, simple and easy. So I tend to just stick with that. And it's got to be the most common. It really <laughs> it's the is. One I and that, see and all that's, the time. yeah, that, anytime you ask anyone anywhere, hey, can you cut my cigar for me? It's usually a guillotine cutter that they oh, yeah. pull out. So, and uh, a lot of like the, the giveaways or the, you know, the ones with the uh, free, promotional free cutters. cutters yeah. yeah. With a, with a pack of cigars or whatever it is. Yeah. They're always guillotine cutters. Um, you got any, any other, any other things to add to the cutters? Any, any different kinds? Well, there there are some weird cutters. Um, one, they're they're not really weird actually. These are pretty common. They're they're more high end, is really what it is. And I, I'm just not that high end of a person um, to like hang out too much in in higher end cigar lounges. But cigar scissors, um, <laughs> they're they're like super fancy scissors basically for they work again just like the guillotine cutter, but a, but they're scissors um, for your cigar. Um, the only time I've ever seen one of these used, I mean, I see them on display in, in shops and online, but the only time I've actually ever seen one used was when I was in Cancun in, in their little like Havana cigar lounge. Um, the guy came around, cut the cigar for me, lit the cigar for me and everything. Um, and that, that's the only time I've ever seen it used. 
Um, another weird one that people are getting into now is the shuriken cutter, which basically means like a ninja star cutter. It's a six cut. It's like a cap basically that you slide over the top of the cigar and it's it got makes s- like six slices in there. six little slices in there. And I- I've not used one of those. I'm, I just don't. Yeah, I don't know. I just don't see the point. Uh, I'm I'm sure they're cool, but um, they're relatively new, and I'd rather just use what's tried and true. So, well, I mean, you could always go old school, like uh, like the old Western movies, and just bite the tip off, tooth and nail it, tooth and nail it. Yeah, that's the way you do it. <laughs> I, <laughs> that's the I, way they do it in the Clint Eastwood movies, man. Right, just bite <laughs> bite the tip off. That that you could really mar the cap that way too. <laughs> I I will say I have had to cut it with uh, uh, my Benchmade before my knife. Um, um, I've seen the knife, and I've also seen. I've, I, well, I shouldn't say I've seen. I've actually cut one with a. Uh, chef's knife <laughs> yeah because <laughs> it's super sharp and yeah. um to me that was better than that was the best option i had at the, at, t- at the, the time, time. And, and honestly it's really not a bad option if it, if it is sharp it'll cut right through it no problem so um yeah okay so now now we've cut the cigar we've we bought the cigar we've cut the cigar now we're ready to light the cigar um maybe you could tell us about some of our lighting options teddy well uh, my number one lighting option is a butane lighter okay I like butane lighters um, because they burn hot. Uh, you can really um, light light your cigar really easily. Yeah, and you know they come in different options. Um, mainly, they come in like uh, the uh, one, two, three, or four flames. So they have like four jets <laughs> uh, that that throw flame out. And yeah. if you get the four flame, you go through a lot of uh, butane. Uh, but you get a really, really good light, a really good consistent light. And it's great for uh, larger ring gauges and, and just bigger cigars in general, having the four flames versus like a, a single flame. Yeah, I, I personally use a four flame. Okay. Um, I just got to make sure, so like say I go on a fishing trip or something, I'm going to be gone for uh, a while. I got to make sure that thing's full. Uh, yeah. Because, you know, if I smoke a couple cigars and... Or if I, you know, let people um, use it, uh, use it, you know, it, it can go pretty quick. And especially for me, because I like to toast the end of my cigar before actually lighting it. Yeah. Um, so you kind of burn through a lot of uh, butane. That yes, way. you do. the The downside for me with butane lighters is, and I've I had a quad that I loved, um, but they they have a tendency sometimes to break or malfunction. Um, I think it also depends on the type of butane you're putting in them too. If it's not super clean burning, they'll they'll sometimes fail the light and. Um, yeah, definitely the type of butane and um, the quality, quality of lighter, lighter that you get. Yeah, um, but they are, in my opinion, also the, more the, finicky. And they're more yeah. they require more maintenance, a little more right. finesse. Yeah, and and that's fine. They're like the AR fifteen of uh, of lighters. <laughs> lighters. Yeah, no, it's absolutely <laughs> you make true. Sure they're clean. They're uh, but the nice thing, like you said, they're quick and efficient, and and they're great in all weather conditions. I mean, it could be pouring rain while you're fishing or hunting. Oh yeah, you're gonna get or that doing whatever, right. and you're still gonna light your cigar without any issues. So. Um, that's that's why I like them too. Uh, you also have the AK forty seven of <laughs> of lighters, which is would be like the Zippo lighters, um, or Bic lighters, or even. Bic lighters. Those are tried and true, and and they'll work. Yeah, <laughs> uh, under a lot of conditions. Yep. Um, you can pull out a a, a Bic lighter that you haven't uh, used in ten a years. Year, ten, no, ten years. I've had one that I have <laughs> for ten years that still lights. Yeah, I mean, I mean, we should probably put Zippo in a different thing in a different category because. Um, Zippos, your, you have to refill yeah, your, and your change fuel, the wicks. And, your fuel will dry out. Yeah, um, yeah. But uh, yeah, the, but the, the go ahead. Oh, I was going to say the reason why I put those two in the same category is because they both use the same style of fuel. Okay, and that that's why. And the reason why I don't prefer them is because they can they can leave like a horrible taste. Yeah, in the cigar. And when I first started getting the cigars, I thought, oh, come on, man, are you serious? You yeah, know, I, I, they, I I thought people were just being. Uh, um, you know, they're they're just trying to sound cool, like be oh, pretentious. I yeah, like, pretentious. Oh, I don't there use I don't use a Zippo, um, but definitely Zippos. They taste like lighter fluid. <laughs> yeah, no, it's it's horrible because they don't burn all of it off. So yeah. they're you know you're getting a lot of that flavor. With and it. even if you don't uh, taste it throughout your whole cigar, it's it's in your mouth. Yeah, and it's in the first, usually within the first inch or so yeah. of the cigar, and then that ruins kind of. <laughs> um, I don't necessarily taste it as much with the the big style lighters. They burn uh, a little, but, but you can definitely. Yeah, taste it. yeah. Um, I mean, if if worse comes to worse, I'll use a big lighter. The one thing where I say a, a Zippo or Bic lighter is good is they're great for cigarillos. So if you're getting into cigarillos because you don't have to hold it in front of the 
the cigar or the end so long like uh-huh. you would on a traditional cigar. I mean, cigarillos light up as fast as like maybe a cigarette would. Yeah, maybe a little bit. you literally just need to puff on it and you're good to go. Yeah, cigarillos, you don't really have to work too hard. <laughs> yeah, and, and most cigarillos are machine made too. Yeah. So you're not really, I mean, it's, yeah, I mean, you're just... At that point, you're you're smoking for the sake of, of smoke. You know, but I've had a pack of um, uh, Arturo Fuente cigarillos, and they were they were uh, pretty good quality. Well, uh, but yeah, they, those course. things are they're super easy to light. To light, yeah. yeah. And so that's when it's okay. The other the other time, and and you know, I don't really uh, this isn't cigar related, but they're great for pipes. Um, pipe smoking you can okay. use a zippo to light a pipe because uh the pipe sits below the actual flame so all the the lighter fluid goes up and so they, they work well for pipes um and then last but not least the musket of all lighters <laughs> would be matches um, i actually like using matches I, I really do too uh they're cheap they're easy you get a great flavor off of matches because it's just wood burning which is kind of nice um, obviously you want to let the tip burn off the phosphorus tip or whatever mm-hmm. it is, because, uh, you don't want that flavor in there. But once that's burned off and it, you get like slightly into the match, then you're good to start lighting. And man, they, they do light really well, but you have to have perfect conditions pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> you're no not wind, no rain, wind. nothing. Yeah. So they are, they're far more finicky <laughs> than butane lighters. Uh, which, yeah. That, so those, those are your lighting options. Yeah. F- for, for, uh, for me, butane's the way to go. Oh, just absolutely. The, just the easiest. Yeah. Um, the, you just got to make sure you have butane. If we're <laughs> make in... sure you buy good quality butane. That's very important because if you don't have good quality butane, um, you're going to have problems with, yeah. uh, with your flame consistency. Mm-hmm. The, I will say this though, indoors, I would prefer a match to butane any day. If if I'm smoking indoors, like in a casino or a lounge, I, okay. I much prefer a match. And that's just me, though. <clears throat> and then, um, let's see, next topic. Now, you've got your, you got your cigar, you got your cutter, you got your lighter. Let's say you go down to the store and you buy a couple extra cigars. You got to have some way to store them. So let's talk about storage and humidification. Um, the easiest one, right off the right off the bat, is going to be a Ziploc bag. Okay. Um, that would be for like the occasional smoker or, or someone maybe who's just buying a pack to take on a, on a trip or Uh for guys night or whatever it might be. Um, occasional smoker that buys one to five cigars at a time. You know, as as soon as you start getting more than five, if you're not going to smoke it within a month then then just don't, don't even bother. Um, because most Ziploc bags will only keep the cigars fresh for about a month. And even that's pushing it. Now you can make it last longer with a human pack, like those Bovita humidity packs yeah. and things like that by throwing those work really in well. They do work really well. Um, so you can always store those in there, but then again, you, you have to have a new pack every time you, you know, every time you, you buy a bag of cigars or whatever it is. So, you know, it can, it can get, um, it can get costly that way. Mm-hmm. Um, but I like to always say that that's the cheapest or even the free option since most cigar stores, when you purchase them, um, purchase cigars, will will provide you with a Ziploc bag and the higher end places will throw a Bovita pack or, or some kind of a human care pack in your, in your bag for you. Um, what about, uh, since we, you and I travel together, we go out, we hunt, we go to Vegas, we go to different places, uh, any anything as far as uh traveling goes yeah i use a little five cigar um uh it's not even really a human or i guess it is you can put a little uh uh human pack in there um but it's just a travel humidor um real hard uh rugged you know it it, uh, really takes care of your cigars um i think the only drawback with those is you're limited to the size yeah um it doesn't it's it's supposed to fit five, but if you have a really thick ring gauge, it's not going to fit five. Right, you'll fit um, four. Or, yeah. yeah, and I like to I like to put smaller uh, cigars or shorter cigars, I should say, in there um, because at the top I like to put my lighter and stuff, right. so I yeah. can carry it all in one one little thing. I, I I think I have the same one or similar one to you too. It's got the foam in there too, yeah. and it's and so they the cigars aren't like just rolling around. It's it's like a pelican case. They're they're yeah, they're really, really really good. I mean, I've, um, I've never that had thing around. Yeah. And, <laughs> never had issues yeah so. i mean basically that thing uh rides in my backpack when i'm fishing so yeah yeah um that's gonna get thrown around it's gonna sit in the back of a truck um traveling from lake to lake yeah uh so they're meant to be rugged and and to really uh, protect your cigars yeah uh, really a cool thing to have if um 
you know, if, if you have, you know, five cigars on hand or you can get bigger ones uh, yeah. that hold about 10 cigars. Yeah. The downside with them, in my opinion, is they generally don't even stay humid beyond a week or two. Uh-huh. Um, so even in that case, a Ziploc bag might be more efficient just because it, it traps in the humidity a little better. Um, yeah, those really, like I said, they're only good for about two weeks at the most. I mean, I, I took some cigars to um, Italy. I've taken them to the UK. I've taken them to Indonesia. Like, and and granted, they've they've been in my carry on bag. They've been in my check bags. Like, they've been all over the place. And they, I mean, the cigars are in perfect condition when I get them out. But by the by the end of the vacation, if we've been gone for two weeks, the cigars are starting to like. Okay, I need to get them into a humidor quick. Uh, get some humidity back into them well that brings us into our next one the humidor yeah um so you have different sizes of humidor um desktop humidor is what most people will start off with um and you know you can hold a lot of cigars um but you know that once you get into the humidor thing you you can really <laughs> you can get coffee tables that are humidors you can it convert your closet into a humidor if you oh want. yeah <laughs> they have the big old like uh double door refrigerator size ones i mean it's it's crazy i mean uh, and that's why we're keeping this limited to desktop humidors because mm-hmm. the beginning smoker at the most, at the absolute most, is only going to go with the desktop humidor. So the average size for these is, again, they hold like 25 to 50 cigars. This is for someone who's a little more frequently smoking, like once a month or maybe even mm-hmm. more. Um, I'll be honest with you. I'd love to like upgrade my humidor setup, but right now I have a desktop that holds 50 and, and it's more than enough for me. Um, the, the only reason why I think I would like more is because at some point it's nice when you want to order a box of cigars, um, yes. you know, and not mix them in. Cause I have a lot of like single cigars and sampler packs and things like that. And so it's nice if you're just going to store multiple boxes or, you know, and you I know. think a lot of people might, might think, well, a desktop humidor may not be so beginner, but, um, you know, if you want to take advantage of the deals that you can get online, uh, it's really good. The other thing too, is when ordering online. You might not get the freshest cigars because they were shipped to you. Yes. And so you want to keep them in your humidor for, uh, you know, a good week or two and uh, get them acclimated. Yeah. Um, and get, them, get them up to humidity and, and get them in really good shape before you start smoking all of them. Yeah. And, and the, like, you know, and I'm, I'm not sure if you mentioned this before, but the, the desktop humidor is great, though, because you can hold cigars essentially forever. Yeah. If they're maintained properly with the right humidification, uh, humidification, and then if they've been seasoned and everything, and then and so the nice thing on that is you know um, it, it's something that the beginning c- cigar person can kind of buy and go okay cool I like this you know this, I'm getting into it I'm gonna get a desktop humidor and you might not outgrow it for five to ten years yeah you know, I, I've been smoking since I was eighteen um it's been 10 years now and i'm still on the same desktop humidor i've had since i was 18 and the cool thing is uh if you go online you can usually buy a combo with that right. come with a humidor lighter and cigars and, cigars and yeah you know the, there's a lot of deals out there you don't have to break the bank yeah. buying a humidor you can break the bank if you want but <laughs> you I don't have to cigar international has a few different combos and they put them on sale here and there so i don't know that it's always um available but they have one, I want to say, for about $40, you get 10 cigars, a cutter, and a humidor. All, and it gets you all started, you know, for about 40 bucks. Um, usually what I tell people is if you're getting started, don't spend more than $100 on a desktop mm-hmm. humidor. Um, you can spend as cheap as 25 and I've actually found some good $25 humidors that, that do keep a decent seal. Um, I've also found some for a hundred dollars that don't keep a seal at all. So the biggest thing to look for when you're buying a desktop humidor is look for a good seal and then also make sure that it's lined with Spanish cedar. Yeah. And, and really easy to check for a good seal. I mean, if you just lift the lid up and drop it, if it slams shut, then that means air is escaping. So there's not a very good seal. Um, if it quietly shuts, then that means that the air pressurized and it, uh, it's it's holding its air. It's, it's, it's sealed. It's holding yeah. its seal. Um, one of the things I read on a beginning uh, cigar site many years ago was that if it makes like a whoosh or a swoosh sound as you close it mm-hmm. or as it, if it hits – because usually it, it's – you know, you've got this big square edge but then you've got a ridge on the inside that sticks out. That's the Spanish cedar that overlaps inside the, the humidor. If it kind of hits – and then takes a minute or a half second to like yeah. s- set all the way down. Then you know it's got a good seal because it's slowly kind of yeah. It's one of, it's out. one of those things where you will definitely know if it's not a good seal. Yeah, you, it you'll just know it. Slam shut. Yeah, 
and you know make a loud a loud noise <laughs> right a- absolutely <laughs> you don't want the loud noise yeah so um before we continue on um on items for the beginning cigar uh aficionado uh let's revisit the cigar uh the macanudo cafe well i will say um i'm at about midway and um so my the ash fell off after about the first third um and i noticed that i had a little trouble keeping it lit after that i had to i had to really um pay a lot more attention to it yeah it almost went out on me a couple times now that it's got a little more ash again um it's performing well <laughs> yeah mine i've been keeping the ash um trying to keep the ash on mine um which is funny because it's really tight, but then it keeps falling off after about an inch each time, mm-hmm. which uh, that's about common though. So there, there's nothing wrong with that. Um, mine has a pretty good burn or like a razor edge. Uh, yours, your Mine's edge. Mine's not quite a razor edge, but it's pretty good. Yeah, it's it's definitely good. Um, the ash is a beautiful color, though, a beautiful white color. Yeah, yeah. And the, to be honest, the flavor to me is just becoming more and more enhanced. Now, I... Uh, you know, as you guys know, I smoke faster than Theodore, so I'm in. I'm about to finish the second third, getting into the last third here, um, and it's definitely getting spicier. And it's not because the mm-hmm. smoke's getting hotter; it's it's literally just because uh, the tobacco itself has some more zest to it. And uh, yeah, the yeah. spiciness and the earthiness uh, are definitely. Uh, what the cigar seems to be about yeah and good and it's great too because it, i'm you know i'm not feeling anything with it whereas like with a, a medium bodied or a full bodied cigar mm-hmm. with the same type of flavor i might be going all right i, I need to slow it way down here yeah this you seems know? to have more flavor than your typical connecticut yeah and that that's why it's in my top five because it, it's so light you know you you can i've even had one of these like while out fishing before eating breakfast with just a cup of coffee in me Mm -hmm. i don't recommend that um and we'll get to that later but um you know it's one of those things this is one of those cigars you can smoke on an empty stomach and probably be okay um and and yeah i just i love these i've I've ordered multiple packs of these i've ordered boxes of them they're just really 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 good cigars now, if I have smoked this before, I don't remember, mm-hmm. but uh, it's pretty good. I like yeah. it. Um, I, I, I would smoke it again. <laughs> <laughs> I know you have smoked it because okay. I remember giving you one. Um, in fact, the Travel Humidor that I purchased had the Macanudo Hyde okay. Parks in them. So I got five of those oh, with yes. the Travel okay, Humidor plus that. a lighter. And that was uh, 40, $30, I think, $35. $35, like yes. Yeah. I, I actually got the same deal before that, and I, I went with the acid. The acids. Yeah. That's right, yeah. Um, yeah. And that, that was a really good deal. $35 with uh, a pretty good lighter. Yeah. Um, which I think, um, if I remember, I think the research, uh, the lighter was like $35 on its own. Or right. Or like $40, something like that. So and then I'd, the Travel Humidor, I think, is about uh, 20, 15 to $20. Yeah, and, and I, I remember just looking, I was looking for a lighter, and that deal came up. So I go, okay, well, I might as well just get the whole thing. Get the cigar and the, the Travel the Humidor the all travel, at the same time. Yeah, yeah. so, and, and um, I didn't realize how how handy that travel humidor would be oh yeah um because you know i don't gotta worry i before i had the travel humidor i remember worrying all the time especially when you go fishing you know you 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 set them in your in my backpack and all right my, i gotta remember my cigars are in here don't you know put the backpack face down or you know what i mean stuff yeah. like that or i'll just carry it with me yeah and leave them in in the truck and then you walk to your 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 fishing spot and forgot your cigars in the truck and you're like ah man now i gotta go back or just not smoke well i was notorious for carrying them in my shirt pocket too Mm -hmm. and it just gets really annoying if you're wearing a fishing vest or a hunting vest or just anything for that matter you know you're constantly having to worry about shoot are these things gonna fall out of my pocket if i bend over so yeah having the travel humidor uh, honestly (laughs) it's funny because i've I've, i use all three of the the humidification and storage devices that we talked about consistently so um, yeah. So anyways, let's go on to what are some extra things that you would recommend to someone that's getting into cigars? I mean, these aren't necessary, but they're good to have. Yeah. Well, you got your cigars, you can smoke them, you can cut them, you can light them, you can store them. Um, the extras would be, uh, it's always good to have an ashtray. <laughs> <laughs> uh, a nice ashtray, uh, ashtray is, is pretty neat. And, uh, I guess the difference with uh, cigar ashtrays is they have um, a lot of them have like a little place for you to ho- put your cigar, uh, set it down. Yeah. You know, um, like the smaller like cigarette ashtrays, you don't typically put a cigarette down yeah. when you're smoking it because they they're they're uh, gone so quick. Yeah. Um, 
yeah, that, that, that would be another thing that I would recommend that people get, especially if you have a designated smoking area. Yeah. Um, you don't want just ash flying around everywhere. Place. Yeah. Um, I, you know, I, I use mine all the time. I got one from, uh, Mexico. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh yeah. I got yeah. you that one. That's right. <laughs> yeah. And that, that's, yeah, they're really great and they're, they're handy. So, uh, the other thing too, to, to couple with that would be like a cigar clip. Um, I don't have one. I really want to get one. Uh-huh. Um, but basically the, it's a clip that holds the scar and then clips to like the table or yeah. something like that. So for guys that, uh, I mean, it'd be useful for me. They even have them that like clip to the bill of your hat. Like mm-hmm. if you're mowing the lawn or the cool thing is uh, with those where I've seen them used the most is on the golf course. Oh yeah. When you, you know, can people, clip them, clip, people clip them to the golf cart or, yeah. Yeah. or their bag or yeah. whatever. Um, I said this on the podcast before. I don't like to smoke while, while golfing. Uh, because I am a very serious golfer. Just kidding. I'm not a very serious golfer. Um, you know, I just, I just feel like, uh, I like to, I like to enjoy the cigar. And I feel like if you're, if you're golfing and smoking that you're not really giving the cigar it's due. Right. Yeah. You know, it's you, attention. You, I feel like, yeah, you're more worried about shoot. Is it going to go out? Do I got to relight it every time and, and things like that. So yeah, those, those clips are actually pretty cool. Um, next would be, uh, one thing I would highly recommend would be uh, something called a hygrometer, which basically, um, really all that that does is just tell you how humid your humidor or your storage unit is. Um, a lot of humidors will come with a manual one. It looks like the face of a clock um, on, on the front of the humidor. Um, some of them are good. A lot of them, to be honest, are pretty unreliable. Uh-huh. I've, I've had two on, on two of the humidors that I've owned, um, and they both have been pretty unreliable to be honest yeah um, honestly that that's what i have um and we'll go into this next but um i have uh humidity beads that hold the humidity at 70 uh 70 percent um so <laughs> all i do is i just check to make sure it's in the same spot all the time that it was yeah, yeah when, so yeah. you know i know it's gonna, <laughs> it's yeah. gonna be right <laughs> so in my opinion digital is better um i think i bought a digital one probably a I would say about eight years ago, um, I've had to change the battery on it twice in eight years. Um, but it automatically can tell me right now my humidor is at 72%, mm-hmm. um, which is where I have my my beads set up uh, as well, which that leads us into hydration um, or humidification. Um, there's three major types. One is, well, um, for beginners, there's three major types. One is uh, beads, the next is gels, and then the last is foam. Um, beads are what, what Theodore and I both use. They're, they're a little pricier, um, but you get a ton of beads with it. So Mm -hmm. it's not like you'll ever run out and they're the best for humidity. Um, you basically just, uh, get them wet, pour out the excess water after, you know, I think I leave mine to soak for an hour Mm -hmm. and then pour out any excess water. Um, they swell up and get really big. And then, you know, as the humidity starts to go down, um, then they start to shrink. The other cool thing is in places where like in California here, where we live, it's, it's dry. So you always want extra humidity. In places like Florida, um, it's actually too humid. So cigars will tend to get mold or whatever if they're left out. So um, these humidity beads actually will will take some of the humidity out um, of the air as well, which is really, really cool. Yeah, the one thing I like about the beads, uh, to me they're worth the price, and it's because I don't have to be checking on my humidor every single week. Right. <laughs> you know, ev- about once a month I can just go in there and check, and it's it's always – right yeah and then you know what about uh about a month is a month and a half around there is when you might start losing a little bit of humidity i, I lose a little Maybe bit about two months during the summer i lose it yeah. a little quicker so i think i check every three weeks in the okay. summer um, yeah i, I check mine probably this about every time weeks. of year i haven't had to check i i did i do check but like honestly i probably wouldn't have had to check for about two months uh-huh. um so yeah it's it's pretty cool uh gel um they make a lot of weird gels they make a, it like cigar uh tube um, a cigar tube full of gel. They have little cups full of gel and those are middle of the road for price. And they're also middle of the road for humidity. They usually work pretty well. The problem with them is after a while, the gel deteriorates. Yeah. I would say after about a year to a year and a half, the gel deteriorates and then it's no good anymore. Um, so you're, you're having to replace them. So in all honesty, even though the beads might be a little pricier up front, um, they're going to last a lot longer for the price. So if you think about it that way, they're actually probably the cheaper option. Mm-hmm. And then last but not least is foam. Most humidors come with like a stock foam humidification unit. Um, it's like the same type of foam that they put in like 
flower arrangements. It's that green oh, okay, like garden yeah. foam. It is horrible. Um, it's super <laughs> cheap, and it's by far the worst way to humidify your cigars. You have to refill those things like I feel like once a week, and even at that, sometimes sooner than that. They just dry out really quick, and they get moldy and disgusting. So I, I just I absolutely hate them. I've never tried them. Yeah, <laughs> I've, I, tried, I've tried the gel before. I tried it initially, and then, and then I think by the time you got into cigars, I had already moved over to gel, and was like, "Yeah, you got it. You have to do gel because it's better." And then we got yeah, into beads. And I'm I'm a big researcher, so um, I started doing a lot of research, and and to me, beads were the way to go. That's what a lot of uh, like the cigar YouTubers that I would follow and stuff were using. And I thought, okay, well, if they're using it, then I should use it. <laughs> uh, so I did a lot of research and. And ended up going uh, with the beads, and by far been my favorite method so far. Yeah, um, I got a uh, uh, a stocking, a nylon, you know, uh, stocking, yeah. and just put the beads in there, tied it up, and you know, it, it lets the the humidity out um, and keeps all the beads together. It's I keep my cool. beads in two shot glasses inside oh, okay. my humidor, so they just sit in the shot glass. I fill it up with water when it's low, and then, like I said, let it sit for an hour or two, dump the excess water out, and then just throw them right in the humidor. They're good. Yeah, so, I mean, that's really pretty much all you need. Yeah. Um, you know, you don't, and, and, and like I said, you, you, you don't even really need this stuff. You don't need a humidor. You don't need, um, any other, you don't even need a cutter. I mean, you, you, if you go down to your shop and you pick out a cigar that you think you're going to like, uh, you, they'll cut it for you there. Um, you could even smoke at the lounge. Yep. Um, uh, well, I should say if, if your cigar uh, shop has a lounge. Yeah. Um, the one that I go to does have a lounge. They have TVs and, you know, a bunch of old guys sitting there telling stories. <laughs> yeah. A lot of them, too, if, if you're just getting into it as well. Uh, like I said, uh, you're just getting into it, really. Like, you're probably not going to want to invest in really much more than maybe a lighter or some matches. Yeah. Um, because you can go down, like we said, buy one or two cigars at a time. They'll keep for a month in the Ziploc pack if you're only smoking one or two a month and you don't mind making the trip. Um, and uh, it's it's one of those things where, yeah, you could do it very, very reasonably. And then, um, you know, as you start to really get into it and go, okay, I I'm, I'm want to order – this pack of 20 or 25 sample cigars of different ones then at that point then it's like okay you got to consider a humidor or whatever but a lot of the lounges offer lockers oh yeah um I've so you can that. you can they pay have that at mine yeah you can pay like you know 20 bucks a month or whatever it is for a locker and you can store cigars you can store alcohol um some of them will allow you to store alcohol glasses cutter all, all your equipment in there um and they're all humidified for you the thing that i don't like about that is it's a reoccurring cost of 20 bucks a month yeah Whereas, you know, you spend a hundred bucks up front on a good humidor and a full setup, you could probably, you know, do that a lot cheaper. Um, but last but not least, do you have any like tips or even tricks for beginning, uh, the beginning, um, cigar smoker, people that are a, just getting into it or B people that maybe smoke every once in a while, but really want to like, hey, I'd like to start smoking more cigars. Well, one of my biggest tips would be, uh, make sure you have time, make yeah. sure you have time to smoke a cigar. Um, if you're going to go buy a cigar or you're going to pull one out of a humidor or, you know, somebody's going to give one to you, uh, make sure you have a solid hour or however long that cigar is supposed to smoke for to smoke it and really sit there and enjoy it. And, um, you know, just sit there with your thoughts and, and enjoy it. Or unless you're enjoying with somebody, uh, uh, have a good conversation and, um, really enjoy it. I mean, you know, I think a lot of people, they they try to do too much while they're smoking um and that's why I, i'll always go back to the to the golf thing a lot of people like to golf and smoke or or uh do other things while they smoke and you're not really giving the uh proper amount of time or and attention yeah attention to the to the cigar, cigar. well and that uh, in all honesty that's kind of embodies what our podcast is about mm -hmm. is is just the two of us sitting back having a, a good cigar sipping whiskey and then having great conversation yeah, that's what this is about 100 um, percent. yeah and on top of that i i would always say don't smoke too fast um and i'm probably the worst person to be giving that advice because yeah. i do smoke fast but it's also because i smoke often um and you'll notice uh if you smoke with veteran cigar smokers they're going to smoke a lot faster don't ever feel like you have to keep up um the only reason why i smoke as fast as i do is because i know i can um, that was one of my big mistakes as a young, uh, 18 year old trying to keep up with, with, you know, people around me that smoked cigars often and mm -hmm. going, well, shoot, he's halfway through his, I should be halfway through mine. Absolutely not. Yeah. Um, pace yourself, 
Uh, well, I'm a slow smoker, and because I subscribe to the philosophy that most uh, smoking experts will tell you is you want to have the coolest uh, amount of smoke um, to be able to get the flavors, and the way to get the coolest amount of smoke is to take a, a slower draw. Less often. And less often. Yeah. Um, but you want to smoke as slow as a cigar will allow you to. Yeah. Um, if you smoke too slow, your cigar is going to go out. Um, so you got to be mindful, and that all comes with experience. Right. And to be quite honest, that's not even stuff you should be worried about. If you yeah. want to look up all that, go ahead and yeah, don't get frustrated with the process. Yeah, enjoy it. Like just, just learn it. about it. I mean, it's. I mean, uh, Theodore and I recently got into. Uh, well, I've been into pipe smoking for a while, but um, I've recently got Theodore into pipe smoking, and that's one of the biggest things that um, both him and I have had issues with. Is man, I can't keep this thing lit or now I'm puffing on it way too much and I'm like feeling sick to my stomach. And like, <laughs> there's this balance of like, we're, we're like enjoying it, but we're also getting frustrated with the fact that we're, you know, we're having all these complications. And, and the problem is, is that you just have to enjoy it. Yeah. Um, don't worry about the small stuff. Don't worry about if your, your, uh, edge is burning properly or, you know, whatever, just, just sit back and enjoy. Yeah. And then pretty much, uh, what's going to happen is if something didn't go right or, uh, you learn something new each time. you know you just go and you and you remember that for the next cigar yep. and you just go okay well you know maybe I should uh, uh, do a little something different when I light it or maybe I shouldn't cut so much off the end or right and that's why I recommend starting out with more of the budget style cigars or mm -hmm. cheaper cigars um, and don't buy too too many cigars off the bat and and don't don't buy too much gear because um, you're gonna have to get used to uh, you know smoking over over time and things like that and so uh you know you might not even enjoy cigars if you're so worried about everything and so starting out um on the on the cheaper side and really getting into it is good um and then last but not least i would just say you know if, if you're like us we do a lot of research on things um before we buy them before we get into different hobbies and activities theodore and i are just like the type of guys that won't do anything without researching it first yeah um, so I would say do research, try out multiple different cigar shops. Um, I think that's very important. Uh, find a cigar shop that's good with beginners. Um, some people just want to sell you stuff. Yeah. Like, like it's like anything else you go into a place, um, that sells something, you're going to get a salesman or you're going to get somebody that really wants to help you out. Right. Um, so, you know, not, not every cigar shop is, uh, they're not all created equal. Yeah. Um, some cigars, some, some places will sell cigars as well as, you know, uh, vape stuff and, and cigarettes and, and chewing cigarette, tobacco. Yeah. And, um, and then there, there are some cigar shops that are cigar shops that have a lounge, uh, where, you know, I've been to one where, uh, my sister was looking to buy, uh, one of her friends, some cigars for helping her out with something. And, um, yeah, we, we went into this shop and I know a little bit, so I went with her and, um, the guy there was just super helpful. Yeah. And, you know, uh, my sister said, had asked the, uh, asked her friend, you know, what kind of cigars he liked and, you know, kind of just based off what my sister who knows nothing about cigars, this guy was able to, to get three good ones and yeah. he even sold me on one or yeah. actually two. I'm sorry. <laughs> I bought yeah. two of them off that guy. Yeah. And that's really important. You know, like, uh, like Theodore was saying many, many, uh, tobacco shops, not cigar shops, but tobacco shops aren't experts on cigars. So, going to a cigar shop where you're going to have someone say, well, you know, if you're new, you might want to try something more mild or medium. Um, you know, you can always go in there and say, I've never smoked a cigar. I've only smoked a few. What do you recommend? I really want to stay more on the mild side and, and they'll be able to direct you to, um, the best, the best options for you. Mm -hmm. And that, that's important. Uh, another great thing is you can try, uh, smoking in cigar lounges with more experienced smokers, mm -hmm. um, where, you know, like Theodore was saying, there's, you know, all these old guys that sit around and just smoke cigars on the weekends. Oftentimes they're the best guys to talk to yeah. and they'll tell you, Oh no, don't, don't try that expensive <laughs> one. Try this one. It's light. You're not going to, you know, feel sick. You can take your time on it. Um, or the other good thing is to smoke with a friend who smokes cigars. I mean, that's essentially how Theodore got into Pretty smoking much. cigars was because i i kind of started and and a lot of our other family members smoke as well and um yeah so the oh and last but not least you can always try a cigar shop that actually rolls their own cigars yeah i know of a couple of them yeah um uh, it, it's pretty cool uh when you when you go to a shop that does that um especially because you can see the process and yep. see how they make them and um a lot of those shops 
have the the people that roll them are very very passionate. Yeah, <laughs> you know if, yep. if you're into a, uh, if you're at a place that's going to roll their own cigars, um, they know every detail about their cigars. Yeah, and and it's it's really good experience. I've literally had an experience like that where I went in and was looking at a specific type of cigar, and I had mentioned that I wanted a more medium bodied cigar, and the guy goes, you know what, I'm going to put you on our full bodied cigar. And I said, no, 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 I don't like full bodied cigars. Absolutely not. I just want a medium body. And he goes, I promise you our full body cigar actually smokes smoother than our medium. Our medium has more bite to it, Mm -hmm. but, um, he goes like, get the smaller size of the full bodied cigar. And I promise you're going to be very happy and this and that. And, you know, in my mind, I'm, I had known enough about cigars to just stay away from full bodied cigars, but I trusted his instinct. And I was actually very surprised at the fact that, it was a very, very smooth cigar, um, really great, and, and obviously he rolls them. He knows exactly what he's talking about. So Yeah, and you want to go to a guy that's going to say, what have you smoked? Yeah. What do you like? Okay, try this. Yeah. You know, and, and, and a, lot of, a lot of times it's up to trusting people, and sometimes you might get a, a, a loser, but a lot of times <laughs> you'll get a winner. <laughs> yeah, and there's nothing wrong with saying I, I haven't smoked anything and I don't yeah. know. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's perfectly all right. Honestly, that makes it a little easier for them because they're yeah. able to just go, okay, we're going to give you the, the easiest thing we have here, and, and it's great. So um, that's kind of it for me. Um, yeah, you want to circle back uh, to the yeah. wild turkey? Oh, yeah, yeah. It's uh, – to me, I, I'm noticing the more the ice melts, the better it gets, and I think it's just because it, it was a little strong. Yeah, the Wild Turkey is uh, Wild Turkey 101. I'm not sure if I've had this before. <laughs> it's pretty strong. Yeah. Uh, the, the very first uh, sip was uh, pretty overwhelming. Yeah, yeah. It's, it really has mellowed out well with the ice. Yeah, and I, um, I think it's paired well with the cigar, to be honest with it, you. It really has. I think because it's got more of a uh, – like a – a spicier flavor to it. it it pairs well with the spiciness of this cigar and so. uh what are your, your closing thoughts on the cigar uh, it's as good as it always is um the macanudo cafes they're they're great for people who like i said just want to get into smoking that maybe want something a little more adventurous than a smooth uh cigar we've had a couple cigars on here that have been almost bland or a little uh-huh. like lacking in flavor um, this is on the opposite end of that where it's a mild cigar that's almost got a bit too much flavor for those who who are are just getting started but again it's a great way to get to bridge the gap between like a mild and a medium cigar yeah i'm really enjoying this cigar um, the only i don't want to say complaint but the only thing issue that i had with it was after that first ash where it was kind of going out a little bit and i've ashed it again and did not have that that issue again so um so it's, it's got a nice burn I've had to relight mine twice, which okay. um, I'm a little – not. I don't even want to say unhappy with, but it's it's one of those things where typically I, I don't have to do that with these. Yeah, and the, um, the only thing we got to take into consideration is we are talking a lot and yeah, maybe and not, yeah, not paying not, so yeah. close attention to it. So, yeah, but other than that, really great cigar. Pairs really well with the whiskey. Um, for those of you, again, looking to get into cigars or for those of you that already smoke cigars that are looking to take it up to the next level, um, you know, there's, there's some great tips uh, there and – Hopefully uh, you found some of this information useful. Yeah. So, you know, if you enjoyed this, let us know. Yeah. Um, you can always uh, get us on Facebook, uh, Instagram, Instagram, Twitter. Um, Twitter. Yeah. Yes. Um, oh, we are on Spotify now. Yes, we are on Spotify. That was uh, yeah. after, I think, five, five episodes. episodes. Yeah, they let us go on, uh, get on to Spotify. We're on, uh, I believe it's the Google store oh, google play google play and yes. then we're we've been on itunes from the beginning so yeah so you know if you like the more cigar centric stuff you can let us know if you want more gun stuff uh which is going to be our primary focus on yeah uh, to be honest yeah yeah <laughs> um if you like more whiskey stuff uh you know we're i, I think as far as uh, combined our knowledge is probably more gun uh uh, gun topics we can probably expand a lot more yeah but it's fun it's fun yeah. to, it's fun to go into these cigar topics oh yeah um you know uh, just like like these uh, people that are just getting into the cigars i'm learning a lot as as i go along still well yeah and that's the best about all the topics the best part about this podcast is i feel like i think initially going into it we thought like hey we n- not that we ever claim to know a lot but it's like yeah. we know enough to have a podcast on it but i'm starting to realize like wow i'm, I'm really learning a ton um, as we go, which is, is great. You know, I'm yeah, definitely I mean, deepening my knowledge. And this is just what it is. It's, it's uh, smoking cigars and hanging out and having two, good conversations. Two cousins having a great conversation. <laughs> so, so yeah, uh, like I said before, I appreciate the, the support. We do. All yeah. people that have been listening and uh, Please listening. provide us some feedback. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Yeah. Um, I've gotten some feedback from a couple people. Um, but, yeah, this is uh, Smoke the Podcast signing off. Everybody have 
a great weekend and good night. Bye.